Hello and welcome to another episode of Launch Legends. Today we're joined by Mark Thompson of Pay Kickstart. Mark is a veteran with 10 years, 10 years of experience in online marketing. He did his first six-figure launch a very long time ago when he instantly got 3,000 customers. But his biggest launch remains Easy ESL, where he did over seven figures in revenue and got 30,000 customers overnight. Mark now is focused on Pay, Pay Kickstart, his flagship product. So in this interview, he really goes into detail about his success and what kind of problems he faced in the beginning. And he talks about how hiring mentors or getting mentors on board as partners really help him with his success. It's a great interview. You don't want to miss this. But before, if you are listening to this on a podcast, please rate and leave a review. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button, rate and leave a review. Hey, Mark. Uh, thank you very much for being on the call with me. Uh, Please, could you tell me how did you get into online marketing? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I've been an online entrepreneur for about 10 years. And uh, in the very beginning, I worked with a lot of local businesses with things like SEO, pay-per-click, email marketing. And I quickly realized that I didn't want to keep trading time for money. I found it very hard to scale. Um, and so I, I found this other side of you know, building an online business, which was being a product creator. And I saw these people creating software and information products um, on a place called the Warrior Forum, which is one of the largest online forums uh, online. And, and I, I saw people selling thousands of copies, generating hundreds of thousands of dollars in revenue, selling everything from WordPress plugins to SaaS applications to information. And I was like, I, I want to learn this. And so I really just spent a year reverse engineering, trying to understand how they went about doing it. And um, to make a long story short, I created a couple training programs that just didn't do very well. And then I uh, kind of went all in and invested uh, about $30,000 into a uh, WordPress plugin that helps you to build your email list. And to me at at the time, $30,000 was a lot of money. And so um, I built it, but I realized, you know, I started to get better with the uh, the, the the process of creating a product, but I didn't have a way to get it marketed. Uh, okay. I didn't have affiliate partners. I really didn't know much about how to drive paid traffic. And so I hired a mentor to kind of come on board and help me launch that product. And um, that was really one of my first aha moments. We generated six figures in a week and um, I was like, I was just hooked. And um, I was, I started to get uh, more and more buzz and affiliate partners and my name started to get out there. And each product that I ended up creating over the course of six or seven years got better and better and just created that snowball effect. So, so Mark, your first product, the, well, uh, I'm not going to talk about the info products you built. Let's talk about the six-figure launch product. Yeah. How did you come about with the idea? Did you do any research for reverse engineer or did you ask any audience or you just created it? Yeah, so um, I was actually, if you guys know who Sh- uh, Jeremy Shoemaker is from Shoe Money from way back in the day, right? He, I was watching one of his videos and he had this thing called the like Good Karma List Machine or something like that. It was basically uh, a, a referral marketing engine where you give someone a referral link and you give them, they can earn rewards okay. for the more they refer your you know, your opt-in or or your product. And I love that idea, but when he was explaining it, 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 it was really hard to do. You had to like create a database and there's some customizations that you had to make and it just wasn't very uh, plug and play friendly. And so I thought how cool would it be to take this idea, this concept and create a WordPress plugin. And, and WordPress was really popular, you know, eight years ago, 10 years ago. And so um, everyone was building WordPress plugins. And so that I, I thought it'd be a really cool concept. And so I went out and I found the developers that created uh, pop-up domination. So if you've heard, if, if you're kind of an old school guy like me, uh, you may have know what pop-up domination is. And so I hired those guys because I loved the product that they created and they helped me build it. Okay, got it. So you said that you did six figures with the launch, and I've spoken to a few other people who are doing extremely great right now, but when they first started, either they'd made like 50 sales or they did 2,000 altogether, and then they did that for a while until they, they just had to go through a very painful process, whereas you did six figures pretty much straight away after your first two. And I'm guessing the main difference was you hiring a mentor. Let's talk about that. 
Yeah, absolutely. So um, there were definitely a lot of struggles that I kind of glossed over, a lot of trial and error. One thing I realized was I needed I needed a bridge, something that would help me get introduced to people that have email lists. Okay. Um, and so that mentor had already built those relationships with affiliate partners who had substantial uh, email lists. And so that was my way to kind of get in front of them. And it was much easier to get that introduction and to start that dialogue with people when I had a mentor who kind of I brought in as a partner. And at the time, I was just like, hey, I'll give you 50% commission if you can just kind of show me the ropes and introduce me to these people. I, it, I wasn't really doing it for the money. I was just trying to make sure I'd, I'd learned the process. Okay. And, uh, and that's what happened. And, and so I was super grateful for it. And it really opened the doors to kind of the next three or four years that I did, you know, started creating products. Until you hired the mentor or you brought him on board as a partner, did you have a big audience, big email list? No, that that's the thing. I really didn't have a way to kind of get my product out there. I, I I had, you know, maybe a couple hundred people on my list, but that, you know, that was just peanuts. That, that wasn't really going to kind of move the needle. And so, yeah, once I was able to get, I mean, we brought probably a hundred different affiliates on board, you know, list size range from a few thousand to a couple hundred thousand. And so he taught me kind of, you know, how to create a sales funnel, some things that I needed to improve on uh, the, the, the front end sales page, uh, talking, uh, uh, improving the pricing. And so I just, it was just such a great learning experience. Got it. Let's talk about the offer. What kind of offer was it? How did you package it? Yeah. So um, the, the front end was, um, I believe it was a, a either a single license or a, uh, a multi license. So you could either install it on one domain or multiple domains. So yeah. that was the front end. Yeah. Um, and, and it was both a, a one-time offer and then a uh, one-time price. And then the first upsell was a developer license. So people that were working with clients could install the product for their, their, uh, their clients. And then there was another upsell. God, it was, it was eight years ago. It's hard for me to even remember these days. But we had a couple upsells in there. And um, you know, we, had, we actually launched it twice. So the first launch we did, we generated six figures. And that was without an upsell. Okay. So it was all just from front-end sales. And I quickly realized if we had a couple, at least one, just one upsell, we had the potential to double our revenue just from adding another product. And so we relaunched it as kind of Lister Option 2.0, which was the, the product. Um, and we were able to, to double our sales um, just from adding an, an, an upsell. And what was the timeline between the first and the second launch? What was the gap? It was about a year and a half. Um, yeah, we worked out a couple bugs from the, the first version, added a couple new features from based on what our customers wanted, and we revamped the, the sales page, revamped, uh, obviously added the upsells, uh, and so it took us yeah, about a year and a half. Okay, so your first launch, let's talk about the numbers if you're feeling you know, if you're comfortable. In terms of revenue, six figures, but how many emails did you get, you know, the audience size and everything? Yeah, it was, God, I want to say it was around 3,000 customers. So that was, I mean, obviously really big for me because, you know, now I, I had a list that I could market to with other offers as an affiliate. So it just helped to open up another revenue stream outside of just the revenue that was gen generated from the product launch. Great, great. So let's talk about, so I've got a few things I want to talk about. So let's talk about your most successful launch and then let's compare okay. the two. What's you know what did you do in the most successful one which you couldn't do in the first one? Sure. So um, it's kind of a loaded question. So my most technically my most successful launch would be uh, we have a product called Easy VSL. So it helps you to create video sales letters very quickly, um, and so we were able to create a seven figure launch from that product. Wow. Now. In, in my opinion, the, the the most profitable launch would be what we do today, which is pay kickstart. So we have a, a billing platform, billing and affiliate platform that we've been, you know, that's kind of our, our main business now. Okay. Um, and so to me, because this, the, because pay kickstart uh, has recurring revenue to it, to me, that's more of our long-term sustainable product yeah. launch, if you will. Whereas with easy VSL, we generated six or seven figures within a week. It was really quick, but there was no recurring revenue on it, okay. right? So 
well, you know, it, 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 it spiked, but then after the launch, it went straight down. Whereas with pay kickstart, it's recurring revenue. People are paying us every month or every year. And so it's just steadily going up. So cool. it just depends on how you define a successful launch. I, I was actually going to talk about pay kickstart because uh, I heard you talk about how you use the launches to bring in cash flow, and then you can use that revenue to basically build a recurring revenue for your other business. Uh, but right. So your easy VSL, what did you do different compared to your first one? So obviously, now you had recognition where you had lots of affiliates who knew you, so you had that problem. But anything else you did differently, which... Uh, um, yeah, yeah I mean, the, the, the product was just a, 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 a huge success. Just the overall concept of what it did. People absolutely loved it. Um, I think there was either one product that was kind of a competitor, but it really wasn't. So it was, it was, in my opinion, it was actually a, a quite risky move to create this product because it had never been really done before. Um, so there's obviously a lot of risk. You don't know. There's no track record of other people doing it well. So it just ended up being like the right fit at the right time, and it just was a great concept that that was very easy to do people people understood it there was demand for it big demand and it didn't really cater to one specific niche so there was mass appeal okay. and um, I think that's what really helped kind of catapult this the the success of it we also had a really nice sales funnel I think there's three different upsells in it the upsells converted extremely well um, and then we also did a high ticket webinar about seven days after the launch which helped to generate you know ten, uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars in revenue just from that one webinar so we brought god i forgot what it was it was like thirty thousand customers from the launch funneled them all into a webinar with you know we maxed out the webinar and we just generated more from from that high ticket webinar great so the product the easy vsl um did you prove the concept by talking to customers, potential customers first? Did you do like a pre-launch or anything like that? Or you just went straight into building the product? No, you know, typically when we build something, it's because we have our own uh, internal pains and challenges. And we're just like, I'm, I'm sick of paying $5,000 to have a VSL created by a video person. Right. Like, what if we just built this? So a lot of what we do is we build it for ourselves and then, you know, we release it to the market. So uh, we do that. I don't know, probably eight out of 10 times. Um, and it's worked quite well. Uh, but obviously we do kind of do a little bit of research just to see what, how people would react to it. And, and we also will do kind of a little beta launch just to make sure that, you know, we're addressing people's challenges and needs with the product. Great. Great. So Mark, one thing I've seen is um, when people are building products, especially software products, either they're doing launches and they stick to that, or they do, they go after the whole, you know, recurring revenue and they build content and they build user base over time. You, are, you, did, you, you basically did the launches and then you transitioned into building your pay kickstart where that's a more of a recurring revenue business. Let's talk about that. How did you transition from there to building a software product which is more long term? Yeah, um, I, I wouldn't recommend doing uh, going the path that I went, um, but it, it turned out to to work out for us. Uh, it was definitely a long term play. So, pay Kickstart will be what it is today without what the, the products that we had created prior. So, we have our sister company, which is Digital Kickstart, and that houses all the products that we've created over the last eight years or so. And so. Because we're a bootstrap company, we yeah. needed funding, we needed revenue to build out Pay Kickstart, which because the platform has obviously grown over the last four years and we, we have you know 24-7 live support. And so and, and, and that was kind of our long-term plan, our long-term success uh, and, and revenue stream. Uh, and so you know, we started with kind of I'd call it like grind revenue, right? You're just grinding out products. Um, we had to continue to support them. So we kind of had to take that revenue and reinvest it into both supporting our existing products, but then also build pay kickstart, which took, you know, it took uh, at least six to 12 months before we even had a first iteration of it. Okay. So you said that you wouldn't recommend your route. What would, what would you have done now if you were starting again and you knew it, you knew yeah, it? So yeah. So what I would do is I would just design the sales funnel a little bit different. So it's okay to have a, a product on the front end. That's a one-time price, but it, it all depends on what your goals are, right? If you're trying to get people into a, a recurring subscription, 
you, know, you can offer a one-time price. People do it on AppSumo and other marketplaces, but you need to significantly limit what the product does because there needs to be some sort of an upsell path or upgrade path to get them into a subscription, right? Because that's at the end of the day, that's in my opinion, the holy grail of any online business is, is having recurring revenue. Okay. And, you know, and for four or five years, you know, we generated a lot of revenue, but it wasn't, in my opinion, it wasn't a business. It wasn't a business. It was a way to generate revenue. Okay. Um, and so that's the difference between, you know, generating revenue and having a sustainable, predictable online business. Got it. Got it. So if you were, again, I'm going back to the same question. So if you were starting out, would you go on something like AppSumo, do a launch there and make sure that some of those customers turn into recurring, recurring customers? Well, yeah. So what I, what I would recommend doing is is building out your kind of MVP. You know, just have it bare bones, get it out into the marketplace, yeah. and then use something like AppSumo just to kind of test the waters, bring people in, and gather the feedback that you need, and then you can start to evolve that product and enhance it over time, and start to prioritize based on what your initial customers are saying, and the product will kind of you know, just build itself based on what you're, you're getting from your feedback. Um, and so places like AppSumo, or even if you have an internal email list, it's, it's fine to offer a one-time price. But again, you don't want to get in that rabbit hole where, you know, people are like, well, you know, I paid, I paid this one time. I I'm expecting the world, right. I'm expecting you to support this thing forever. And, and I get all the new features. And, and, and so what you have to do is, is make it crystal clear that, Hey, you're going to get access to this particular, these features or, or some sort of limitations. But, you know, obviously if, if you want to continue to use it, if you're getting value out of the product, which hopefully that's what they're doing, then they're glad to pay monthly for it. But so you want to make sure that you've crafted your sales funnel in a way that you're giving them a taste of it. They're getting value from it and they're glad to upgrade because they're getting value. Great, great, great. So one last question. Who's taught you the most when it comes to launches and building products and getting out there in the marketplace? You talk about your mentor. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a really good question. And I've had so many different mentors. And some mentors I've either worked personally with, or I've just watched at a distance. And so, you know, guys like Russell Brunson, and uh, Jeff Walker, and Ryan Dice, just kind of some of the old school guys. Um, I love just kind of sitting back and watching them. Um, but then I've also had some great partners over the years, um, technical partners who have taught me, and I'm not a technical person, but um, I'm able to manage development teams um, because of what I've learned over the years on how to build processes, how to manage technical projects the right way. And I couldn't have done that without kind of being in the trenches with some really great, talented partners that I've worked with over the years. So there's a, there's a mix, right? There's people that I watch from afar just to kind of, and, and each person I like to kind of take um, specific things, right? Because certain certain mentors, certain people out there are great at certain things. And yeah. so I try to take bit, bits and pieces from each person that I study or that I've worked with. Great, great, great. Mark, thank you very much. I think uh, that's all I need from you, but thank you very much. That was very helpful and uh, hope to speak to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it.